Certain topics that could have sparked significant controversies within the Christian community today, if not directly spoken by Jesus Christ himself, include the subject of demons and demonology. Present-day Christianity often tends to ignore the existence of demons, but Jesus openly acknowledged and addressed this matter. To commence this sermon, I want to emphasize clearly that it is crucial not to engage with demons. Avoid any form of interaction with them. Refrain from participating in games or board games inspired by demonic influences. Demons are not to be taken lightly or played with. We must acknowledge the reality of the spiritual realm, which can have tangible effects on our world. Consider this as a word of caution. Do not toy with demons or entertain their presence. Unfortunately, the world and media often romanticize witchcraft, wizardry, spellbooks, Ouija boards, incantations, and occult practices. However, the Bible advises against such involvement. It is alarming that children's television shows even introduce spells to children as young as five years old. It is important to recognize that the devil has no moral compass, integrity, or empathy. He will seize any opportunity to infiltrate your life. Therefore, it is essential to avoid any association with the dark world and to guard the doors of your life against it. It seems as though society is regressing to a time when demons were viewed positively as observed in ancient Greece. The Greek term daimon, derived from the verb dest, meaning to divide or distribute, held positive connotations back then. Demons were considered divine beings with supernatural powers, serving as guardians, spirits, or angels who provided guidance and protection. They were seldom depicted in Greek art or mythology, as their presence was felt rather than seen. In those times, having a demon or a demon's assistance was seen as beneficial. Unfortunately, contemporary television and TV shows now glorify this concept, suggesting a return to such beliefs. It is important to clarify that there is no such thing as a good demon, despite what some people claim or believe. Demons do not repent, exhibit mercy, or demonstrate goodness. Their sole objective is to harm humanity because we are created in the image and likeness of God. The devil and his minions are present on earth with the purpose of waging war against those who follow Jesus Christ. It is crucial not to engage with demons, as the outcome will be regrettable. Jesus has informed us about the devil's mission and compared him to a thief whose aim is to steal, kill, and destroy, as stated in John 10 verse 10. Demons have no intentions other than these destructive actions. In all honesty, they can appear helpful in order to accomplish their mission of stealing, killing, and destroying. If attacking a person through these means leads to success, they will gladly do so. It is essential to understand that the world we live in is filled with spirits. Did you know that there is an account in the Bible, Mark 1, 23 where a man possessed by a demon came to a church? The people were astonished by his teachings as he spoke with authority unlike the scribes. Furthermore, there was a man with an unclean spirit in their synagogue, and he cried out. This example demonstrates that demons can be present even in a religious setting like a church. In a similar vein, about 10 years ago, a house in Gary, Indiana, was demolished due to demonic activities that took place there. The house earned the nickname Portal to Hell because numerous demonic incidents occurred. The residents of the house were occasionally possessed by these demons. In 2012, a mother who had experienced these events was interviewed. She shared that her daughter levitated above her bed, suspended in midair. The girl was lifted off the bed and levitated. The family described the voice of the demon as resembling death, and they witnessed clear liquid seeping from the walls and heard footsteps on the basement stairs, despite there being no one present. What struck me was that doctors, nurses, a priest, and several police officers all witnessed these occurrences. These occurrences, which included her son walking in reverse up a hospital wall, are truly inexplicable. It goes beyond logical explanation. However, when dealing with demons, one must remember their supernatural nature. Just imagine her son defying gravity by walking backwards up a hospital wall, causing doctors and nurses to flee. This event was witnessed by multiple individuals and even documented. 
Visitors also reported seeing disturbing black figures in the house. Various eerie activities took place in the home, confirmed by medical professionals, law enforcement, and casual visitors. Zach, the host and producer of the show Ghost Adventurers, purchased the house in 2014 and later demolished it. In his report, he states that there was something inside that house capable of performing inexplicable feats. Even individuals with high credibility couldn't explain what they witnessed. There was an undeniable darkness and immense intelligence and power. It seemed like a genuine gateway to hell existed in that home. Witnesses were terrified by the horrifying and awe-inspiring sights within the house. Even the priest who conducted a ritual cleansing attested to the presence of demons. People reported being lifted and thrown against walls and furniture by an unknown supernatural force. Strange demonic figures appeared in various forms, such as the shadow of a man, a looming black monster, a ghostly withered old lady with red eyes, and a hood that emitted odorless oil from the house's walls. The operations of demons are undeniably real. People have reported unexplained disturbances in their homes, including objects moving without cause, eerie sounds, and inexplicable apparitions. Some have felt oppressed by an unseen presence, experiencing a profound sense of dread or encountering manifestations that defy natural explanation. These experiences, often dismissed or rationalized by modern society, point to a reality long affirmed by the Bible, the existence and influence of demonic forces. In this context, it is crucial for Christians to possess spiritual discernment and adhere to scriptural grounding. The Bible offers numerous accounts and teachings that enable believers to recognize and resist demonic influence. For example, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 2.11 warns believers not to be deceived by Satan's tactics, as we are aware of his schemes. This emphasizes the importance of being aware and understanding the spiritual realm, including the strategies employed by demonic forces. Engaging with elements of the demonic world can open a person up to darkness. Acknowledging the reality of demons, let's now discuss what can be done in the battle against them. First and foremost, one must put on the complete armor of God. Finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Clothe yourselves with the complete armor of God so that you can resist the strategies of the devil. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the rulers of darkness in this world. It is a battle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up the entire armor of God so that you can stand firm in the evil day. After you have done everything, stand firm then, with truth as your belt, righteousness as your breastplate, and your feet ready with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit, with every kind of prayer and petition. Stay alert with perseverance and supplication for all the saints.